I feel like when I sit down to make a sympathy card that there really isn't anything I can do to brighten the person's day. No matter what I do, the paper, the stamp, the inks, it's not going to bring back their loved one or fix their problem. So after thinking about it and reflecting, I realized the reason I don't like making sympathy cards is because I don't like making sympathy cards. It's as simple as that. I like making cards that are generally not considered sympathy cards, cards with a lot of color and bright, clean cards. Those aren't your traditional sympathy card. So I figured if I like them and they bring me joy, maybe they'll bring the recipient joy. So that's what I did. I made a clean and simple, bright, happy sympathy card. Let's get started. Recently, I purchased a paper and accessory grab bag from Hero Arts, and that's what prompted me on this journey to making a sympathy card. This is the mystery bag that I received. It's got a lot of really fun stuff in it. You can see it has this underwater embossing powder, that pink glimmer lacquer, as well as several mini ink cubes. And this is the sympathy stamp and die that I'm gonna be using today. It has a little sampler of watercolors, this fun blank uh, accordion book to put lots of fun little things in. And then it comes with a really nice stack of cardstock. I am a sucker for these mystery bags. I love the surprise of getting them in the mail. I probably get too much stuff like this, but it comes with all these fun colors. The white, you can't really see it, but it's kind of a textured paper, which is really pretty but then it has pinks and glitter and shimmery paper and lots of different things. So I'm going to be using the stamp and some of the paper and some of the inks as well for my card. So I'm just starting off with some Nina 110 pound cardstock here, and I'm going to stamp the calla lily, the leaf and the stem and I'm using some Versamark embossing ink. I did put down some anti-static powder when I started out there. That just helps to keep the embossing powder from getting where it shouldn't go. So I'm inking that up pretty well. I'm gonna come in and use my pressure tool to get a good even application of the ink on the paper, and then I'm going to emboss these. This embossing powder is really fun. I mentioned it's called Underwater. Unfortunately, a lot of the items that are in this mystery bag aren't available online for individual purchase, but uh, there's some really similar items and I will link to the mystery bag as well as some similar items that I found for individual purchase if you are interested in getting them over at my blog, dreamcraftcreate.com. So this embossing powder is really pretty. It's blue and sparkly and not at all what I would normally think to put on a sympathy card. But it was in the bag and uh, after all that reflection I did, I thought, you know, I'm gonna use these colors. I'm gonna make this card how I would like the card to be if I was receiving it. So this isn't for everyone. Obviously, some of the other cards that I see people make for sympathy cards are absolutely gorgeous. They're so elegant and refined. That's just not really my style though. So I, that's what makes it difficult for me. So I think the biggest takeaway I would say if you struggle with sympathy cards is to make the kind of card you like to make and make it a sympathy card. I don't think there needs to be some kind of set genre of what a sympathy card should look like. I think sending a heartfelt card that you are proud of and you're sending it to someone because you want to send them some love during a rough time, I think that's all there needs to be to it. I don't think it needs to be as difficult as, at least as difficult as I made it. So coming in here with some white embossing powder, I did stamp the with sympathy sentiment that came with the set. And I got a lot of extra embossing powder on my sheet. So I did go in with a little flat head dry brush in order to get off the little bits of extra embossing powder. So that's a trick. If you ever have 
trouble with embossing powder sticking to your paper, I definitely recommend using a dry paintbrush to get it off. I would say the flathead style of paintbrush like that I'm using works the best, at least in my opinion. So now I'm going to use the colors Splash and Pool Party. And just, I mean, like, come on, those, those ink colors don't scream sympathy card, but they're beautiful. They are these really bright, happy colors. And I think they could bring someone a little bit of cheer during an otherwise difficult time. So I'm just coming in with the splash and I'm going to do this on the diagonal. I'm doing splash and then pool party. And then I'm going to leave a strip of white in the middle. And then I'm going to do some more pool party and splash on the other side. So right now I'm just blending the two inks together. And I have not used any Hero Arts inks before. I actually really like them. They do look a little splotchy when you're putting them on, but once they dry, they blend out really beautifully. And I will definitely be getting some more, I'm sure, in the future. Not that I don't already have enough ink, but inks, stamps, and goodie bags. Those are my favorite things. And you know what? They bring me joy. So that's okay. Maybe they don't bring you joy. Maybe you have enough and you want to dig into your stash and see what you already have. That's okay too. That's another thing I think people get really wrapped up in is needing to have the newest, best thing because they feel like they have to. Don't ever feel like you have to. You know, if you really love something and it's going to bring you joy to have in your craft room, then consider getting it. But there's always going to be something else too. Remember that. Anyway, I digress. So going back and I'm just adding a little more ink here and there to blend it out. And you can see that beautiful emboss resist. Off camera, I did rub it with a paper towel once I was all done. And that white just now shines through and it looks so gorgeous with that blue and kind of greenish teal background. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to apply my die cut calla lily. This stamp is really pretty. It's very finely detailed. I love how gorgeous it is. You could do all the pieces in different colors too, which is kind of fun um, versus all in one color. I like that they're separated out like that. So you could stamp these. You could also stamp them in clear or white and then watercolor. There's so many different things that you can do with a style of stamp like this. I oftentimes like to stamp my images all in one color and then just leave them like that, not color them, not do anything with them. And I think doing it in this glittery light blue embossing powder brings it a little bit more glamour. I don't know. Anyway, so I cut out off camera a piece of craft EVA foam and I'm just using that to add some dimension to the flower. I, I think that adds a lot to this card. It's a little bit of something extra. And you could cut out several pieces of cardstock, like maybe two or three with the die like this. You don't have to use craft foam. I know some people don't like craft foam. I think it is wonderful. It makes adding dimension so easy when you have die cuts that you can just cut out the piece and put it behind. So just making sure I like the placement before I commit and then I'm going to go ahead and put that down and you can see now how those colors in the background have blended once they've dried they look really nice together. I picked out a piece of this light blue cardstock. I believe it's the Arctic cardstock. I'm not sure exactly because there wasn't a list of included cardstock colors, but from what I can tell, I think it's the Hero Arts Arctic cardstock. And all of this cardstock was really nice. It was a nice weight. It was easy to work with. I actually cut out this panel and the card base as well as the top panel with my Cricut because I don't have any slimline dies and I always mess up my measurements <laughs> when I am cutting out a slimline card. I'm getting better. So I did create a Cricut template uh, that I will share over at my blog. It's actually already there. So if you would like access to that project link, it's made with free shapes that I put together in Cricut uh, Design Space. You can go over to my blog and get access to that. 
So I did cut out another piece of the craft foam to put behind my top panel to give it a little bit of pop and dimension there. And it really adds something to have that craft foam. I, I, I just think it really adds a lot to have the dimension in your cards. So I did off camera go ahead and lay out the embellishments where I wanted to put them and I'm just using some Gina K Connect glue to apply my embellishments. I, it's funny, I don't know if you've seen my other videos, but I always manage to get sequins and embellishments all over the place when I'm crafting. I don't know about you guys, but I have found it's a little easier for me to figure it out off camera where I want them to be. Otherwise I'd be keeping you guys here all day while I fussed around with embellishments. Anyway, these are Trinity stamp embellishments. I really like them. These are called the bubble blowouts. These are probably my favorite embellishment that I have right now. I'm always trying to find a way to incorporate them into my cards because I think they're so fun. They pick up the colors of whatever is around them. So there's our finished card, guys. I really like it. I think it's beautiful. I think it might bring a smile to someone's face that is going through an otherwise rough time. I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you guys think about sympathy cards. What's your favorite style of card to make? I will see you guys again soon. Hit that like and subscribe button and have a great day. Bye.